Uh, so in about 24 hours, 3,000 of you voted for the long version of the studio tour. So you're getting the long version. This turned out to be a little bit more of an undertaking than I was originally anticipating. Uh, this is quite the video. I would love for you to like it, share it, and subscribe if you so choose. That would be lovely and I think would really help me out, especially if you want any more of these types of videos in the future because... Whew. Now, there are a couple audio products in here that were either sent to me for review, on loan for review, or I paid for. And everything else, and I literally mean everything else besides that, I bought and paid for. Now, my goal in this space is to make better videos and I usually purchase gear, as you can see, with the money that I earn from things like affiliate links. So I would greatly appreciate if you would use any of the affiliate links. If you see anything down below, there's no additional cost to you. I just get part of the commission. Now to make this slightly easier, and I think for my own sanity, I sort of wanted to categorize a lot of the pieces that I have here. And so I've divided them up into three main color codes. You'll see that right there in that corner, green, yellow and red, kind of like a stoplight. Red means that it's a product that I do not recommend. Uh, I have it and I would never purchase it or recommend it again. It's just something that I keep just because I have it. Yellow is gonna be stuff that for whatever reason is okay, is fine for some people, but I wouldn't recommend others. Kind of just that middle territory. And then green, as you can probably conclude, is stuff that I would absolutely buy again, would absolutely recommend, and in some cases would not be able to live without. Last thing. Uh, next time I ask for a vote, just do the short version, please. It's way easier on me. Okay, thanks. All right, bye. So right now, this is my editing slash listening desk area. This is right next to the listening area, which is just for like speaker listening and stuff like that. I do feel like even though this was specifically built for that purpose, I end up doing a lot of my editing kind of on the workbench or just at home. But that's kind of the idea of what this place is supposed to be. So I'm still rocking the baby Genelex. Uh, of course, the, those little white babies, I think they're the G1s. Uh, they're awesome. They really kick butt. You do need a subwoofer, which I've got right there. And that's an Emotiva SE8. I really quite like that thing. It's got a passive on the bottom as well as that eight inch woofer on the front and it surprisingly stops pretty well. The desktop is an Ikea tabletop with just some standard standing desk legs. Not really that big of a deal, I don't feel like. At the moment, I've been very privileged to be listening to the Abyss Diana TC um, and I'm also in the middle of the LCD5 review and so comparing those high-end headphones has been just terrible. <laughs> Those are plugged into the Fio K9, but that might be swapped out occasionally. I'm not quite sure. It's a very versatile device. I do think that other sound systems do sound a little bit better than that one. I might swap one of those out for this. Uh, and then you had the, the editing area. So I'm using the new MacBook Pro 16 inch. It's just been an absolute workhorse. It's crazy. I will go through an entire days of shooting and then I'll go home and it's like 88%. It's like, what? And I'm like referencing shots using the awesome screen that that comes with. I'm like plugging in footage. I'm, I'm dragging stuff from the cards from the camera to the SSD. And it just, it handles it so well. It's really, really a joy to use. The screen is awesome. It gets magnificently bright and colorful. It's very good. I highly recommend one of these things. Uh, and then we have the mouse that I intend to use, but I feel like the trackpad just gets overridden. But MX Master 3. It's all right. Now, eventually the plans are to put the new, whatever the new iMac Pro is, as long as it comes with certain things. I think what I'd like to see with that thing is high refresh rate display, obviously. I'd like to see just a bigger version of this screen because this screen is really good, but uh, it's a little small. So I do most of my final editing at home where I can see things on the big, like CX. But yeah, I've got a spot for the iMac Pro whenever that comes out. On the walls, you'll see something familiar. Of course, these sound panels that you will have seen in my, my previous studios, which are just bedrooms. <laughs> uh, and I uh, couldn't let those go. Those function really well. I think they look really cool. Um, got a Quasar Science light over there and an area for my motorcycle gear. I've got an Alpine Star jacket that I really like. Uh, and those have a custom zipper to fit some Dainese pants. Um, I don't really like the fit of the Dainese jacket. So uh, stuck with the Alpine Star. And then this Scorpion Evo carbon fiber helmet is awesome. This is one of my favorite purchases in terms of riding gear. Uh, it's got these blow up cheek pads if you want that kind of squish more against your face. It's 
it's awesome. It's lightweight. It doesn't whistle. It's got tons of airflow. I love that helmet. And earlier when I said that there was items in here that I literally couldn't live without, that might be one of them. Uh, there's a good possibility that that thing might save my life one day. It's got a really good crash test rating as well. Further back there, you'll see a couple of familiar things. One, the plant grew up. So that's cool. You will see the Thule backpack. This is actually a photography backpack from an outdoor company, oddly enough, like they make a lot of like bike racks and stuff like that. And uh, it's been on motorcycle trips and being a daily use EDC backpack. And uh, for years I've had it at this point and it's held up really, really well. There was a couple furniture items from Dania and that uh, kind of gray and white looking tall cabinet thing is from Dania as well. Uh, that particular piece is just okay for quality, but the other Dania furniture that I have and is in here, I like a lot. And then very last thing, I am just using some generic chair that will eventually be replaced with an actual office chair with wheels. So right off the back end of the desk, you have this area. This is the sort of speaker listening area, I suppose. Also kind of doubles as a lounge area. There's still definitely some work to do in the section, but let's talk about the pieces that sort of make this area up. So first of all, the, the couch that we're sitting on. Uh, this is actually an outdoor couch. One, it looks, I think, very modern. Uh, two, I really like the gray, but it's got these changeable seats being outdoor. It's also relatively rigid, uh, but also very light. And I also have the benefit of being able to pick this up and move it around with ease, which I think is is quite valuable for someone like me who's constantly moving stuff around, needs things to get out of the way, things like that. Next to it, we have our second piece of Daniel furniture, the uh, orange kind of coffee table. I don't know if this thing has a name or not, but yeah, i uh not typically a huge fan of orange, but I actually quite like this one. And then you have the main listening equipment. So currently we're testing a topping MX-5 on the Magnapan LRS speakers, and we're doing a review for both uh, while utilizing both. Now this will not be a static set. This will be changing. There will be new speakers, there will be new amplifiers, there will be new headphone amps on there. Right now there's a tube amp on there, which is the X2O uh, TA26, I believe, uh, next to some Vanitus, and I've got the LSD5s parked there for their review. And then there's just kind of general storage underneath into that third and I believe final piece of Dania furniture that we have in here at least, which is just gonna be the Dania TV stand. Up on the wall, we have a gift from my mom, the coffee sleep repeat sign, uh, and then next to those, more of those acoustic panels from uh, my apartment. And of course, there'd be no studio without the completion of a Lego set. So of course, I've got that Scout Trooper all built up. Now, one last thing you actually may have noticed is that white panel over there. What is that and why is it? Well, I've actually got two of them. These are the giant acoustic panels. We're going to talk about these in a second. But uh, the reason why is because big rooms like this lose a lot of bass. They lose a lot. And if you don't have outer walls, uh, your outside um, kind of imaging capability is usually a little bit less. You want open, you don't want it right against there, but you also don't want it super, super close. Now, I typically put one on the right side, and one on the left side, and that kind of just closes everything in a little bit. It makes the outside imaging a lot more distinct, and it also makes the base a lot more impactful. That's why they're on there. So I think that's it for the listening area. So the next thing, I know that there have been a lot of you patiently waiting for me to talk about it, so. Now I'm finally gonna talk about it. This is my motorcycle. This is a 2015 Triumph Daytona 675R and it's been the best motorcycle that I've ever owned. I absolutely adore this thing and uh, there are few motorcycles I would rather have than this one. Aesthetically, this is right up my alley. I do like matte black, I love red. I just really dig the look of this thing. For those of you who are unfamiliar and who may be curious, this is a factory paint job. It, it's got some incredibly resilient uh, paint too, by the way. Um, I don't think I have a single chip or crack after about 4,500 miles on this thing. So some notable points about it. Uh, Olin's rear and front suspension, so full suspension setup. It's adjustable. It's it's a really phenomenal suspension, actually. It's got full ABS Brembo brakes as well. It's got a fender delete on it. The majority of the carbon fiber on this thing is actually from the factory as well, but there are a couple aftermarket pieces like the brakes that were added for the carbon fiber look just to complete the whole picture. And then it has a RAM mount for my phone, which is... 
uh, surprisingly effective. Like I would race with that thing on and like no problems. It's really, really good. The bike that I grew up on was an SV650 and then it was a Yamaha R6 and then it was this. Unfortunately, when I was 18, I wrecked my 650 pretty badly and uh, then my R6 was stolen. And then with the insurance money, I, I bought this thing. So yeah, that's uh, my bike history here. It of course has the factory upshifter and they sound mean, especially if you put an aftermarket on it. So I'll do a sound test right now. to walk in on an average day, this is probably where you'd find me. Right here at this bench, cup of coffee, laptop, either editing, scripting, doing whatever. <laughs> now for whatever reason, I really tend to gravitate towards this area, uh, but this is actually the Josh and Jason destroy everything set, which I would call the J&J &J set because it's just easier. This isn't the shot we would typically use. Typically we would go forward facing, so I'll show you what that looks like. This is actually an Ikea countertop that we're kind of using as a makeshift workbench on top of just some hobbled together pieces of a, like this is part of a shelving unit. We have some two by fours to give us a little bit of slots underneath the, the desk. And But this is where the vast majority of any sort of building happens. Like when we made the acoustic panels, that was all stuff that we would use localized to this area. So yeah, this is sort of the test bed construction area. And this is right to the side of listening area. Actually, this section is separated only by the area where the motorcycle goes in. And in that section, I'm actually not 100% sure what to do with. Like it's kind of barren in there. Like there's not a lot going on. But yeah, some key parts of this area. You obviously had the bikes mounted to the wall, um, the lighter one on top. <laughs> the road bike is a Trek and the mountain bike is a Giant. Um, the Trek is okay, but I really like the Giant. Um, I don't think I've exceeded its capability yet. One day I want to do a build on like an actual like downhill bike because where I live now, there's lots of ski resorts that kind of double as uh, kind of mountain bike trails in the summer. So kind of want to get into that maybe. The lights in the back are actually not Quasar Science. I actually decided to take a risk and go with one I wasn't familiar with, which is the NAN lights. That was a recommendation from my buddy Tyler and he nailed it. Those things are awesome. I really, really like those. The main benefit of those, even though they're not quite as capable for color variety or color accuracy as the Quasar, they're drastically less expensive. I think they're like half the cost and they're battery powered if you want, or you can plug them in like we have them so they can run 24 seven if we need. Now the tool chest, this has been like just this super satisfying personal project of mine. Uh, I grew up spending a ton of time in a garage. Like I hung out with friends in garages. I hung out with friends in their garages, my garage, spent a lot of time with my father in the garage and stuff. And I was very privileged to be able to have a lot of garage experience. So like a garage is very familiar to me. I think that's why I like the warehouse thing so much. It's just a big garage basically. But the tool chests I've been trying to make as perfect as possible for utilization in this area. So it is slowly filling up and I'm not gonna go too deep into it because that's a whole nother video by itself. But basically what we're doing is every tool is gonna have a specific location that's cut out inside foam. But some of the tools that I've been really loving that have been uh, recent acquisitions for me that I was not familiar with are from the brand, I think it's either Wera or Wera. Uh, these tools are amazing. They're a little bit spendy, not quite to the level of SK tools or Snap-on, uh, but also a little bit more than something like a Craftsman or Milwaukee or something like that. But the quality is top notch. Every single tool that I've bought from them so far has been awesome. Uh, you'll find lots of these screwdrivers sprinkled around the, the place. I have one in the camera cart, which we'll get to. And uh, yeah, I, I really like them. Definitely worth the money in my opinion. <laughs> Now this area is what I call the video highway. Uh, this is this middle section that runs right down the center between the recreation area and the different sets and the desk and the listening area. 
and it's kind of this main thoroughfare that runs between all of it. Now, in terms of the production side of these videos, this is probably the most important area. And even though it's very simple, it's super effective in its kind of emptiness and overall just flexibility of maneuverability of things. So we have to get things like these giant sound panels right here uh, moved or those giant soft boxes back there moved and kind of everything needs to be able to go from one place to another to get a diversity of shots in different locations efficiently and without spending a lot of energy moving these big heavy objects if they didn't have wheels. So this reminds me of those old school comparisons of like a painter and a blank canvas, right? This is very much a blank canvas where there's a lot of potential and if we utilize it right, it can really reward us. So let me talk about some of the things that we use in this video highway. So for the video production end, we do use some motorized equipment. A lot of times, uh, it's, to me, it's easier to get the super smooth shots uh, consistently. Once you learn kind of the ins and the outs of each device, you can use them pretty effectively. So I wanna talk about a few of them. So the first motorized tool that I adore is this DJI Ronin. I think it's an RS2 is the official name. Maybe it's just an S2. Uh, anyways, this thing is about a thousand bucks, at least when I bought it, I think, worth every single penny. This thing is super smooth. I can do 160 millimeter macro shots with this thing, like panning, tilting, rotating. It can do some incredible stuff very, very smoothly. It can also handle a heavy payload. So that fully caged A7S III that this is shooting on can go on here, no problem, and it works really well. I love it. Uh, this is definitely my favorite piece of motorized equipment that we use. Now, the theme of both the cameras and every motorized piece you'll see here is that they all have the same uh, mounting plate on the bottom for these Manfrotto heads. Now, that brings us to this Edelkrone slider. This one is a very slow slider, but it's made for very, very smooth movement, uh, but it's just kind of left and right. Yes, sometimes I do pair the two. Um, or with the bigger slider, I'll sometimes put this on if I want like a lateral movement or a forward movement, and then I want to like pan or tilt the head up and down while I'm moving. I'll use shots like that occasionally. They do take a long time to set up, so I don't use them often, but yeah. So then there's big slider. Now, this is my least favorite piece of kit. I will change it eventually, but while it works and I know how it works, I'm utilizing it. Uh, so this is a GVM slider. It's not particularly smooth. It's also not particularly stable. Uh, quick word to the wise with this one. Uh, before you change your set, before you move on to a different uh, kind of shot, rewatch the footage and make sure that you can either stabilize it or that it's smooth enough for you to utilize for what you want before moving on. Sometimes this will get hiccups where it just pauses for a brief second and then continues. And that severity of jitter is not something that I can really correct with like warp stabilizer or something like that. Um, so sometimes I have to retake the shot. And again, this also has the mounting plate on the bottom. Then I have a two camera setup. Um, this is more of a redundancy backup camera. Uh, this is an A6600 with a EF uh, to M mount adapter running a Sigma 18 to 35 lens. Love that lens a lot. So yeah, I use this for certain shots, but it's nothing compared to that thing. So this is the bread and butter. Uh, this is the Sony A7S III. It's, it's awesome. This has a free world 4K seven inch screen on it. Now, a lot of people might harp on me for not going with something a little bit nicer than this, but here's the thing. I shoot S-Log and basically all I need is false color like that. And I can basically just, I know how it's gonna work out. I've shot enough of this camera to know exactly what it's gonna look like, even without false color, to be honest. But the big screen helps a lot more with like framing and make sure everything's perfectly aligned and stuff like that. And then the only benefit that this thing really has is the price, so it's easily replaceable, metal chassis, and then uh, the false color if, if you do use S-Log. Uh, connected to that is a Sigma 24 to 70 lens. The only thing I don't love about this lens is that if you're directly overhead, uh, it will slowly like zoom in because the weight of the outside element just kind of weighs it down enough for it to zoom in. So I have a piece of gaff tape that I kind of lock the zoom level with. It's the only complaint I have. Now this camera is stupid and I could literally talk for hours and hours and hours. Probably don't want that. Uh, but let's talk about what I use it on. Most people will probably have heard of this first from someone like MKBHD who uses uh, a very similar tripod to this. Uh, this is a Satchelor Flowtech 75. Uh, they also make 100 and this is possibly the greatest 
tripod for YouTubers ever. It's super lightweight. It's got these magnetically attached legs. It's super easy to extend. It balances really easy. There's a whole lot of benefits to this. In fact, I've actually already made a video about this thing. I'll link that down below, but yeah. Highly recommended on this. It's definitely a little spendy. Uh, I went back and forth for like a year on whether or not to buy this. And since I bought it, I think it is worth absolutely what I paid for it. Like now I do use lots of little different lights, but I do want to shout these little Apture MC lights out in particular because they just are just so convenient for like lighting something up with just a little bit of light. You know, you can change the direction. You can go anywhere. They're magnetic. So like they're literally, well, I don't have anything magnetic. Well, yeah, anyways, they're magnetic. So they're, they're great. And then you have this thing. So this is a game changer for me. Uh, this is a camera cart with basically anything and everything that I might need for just production in general, kind of in one cart in kind of one system that rolls from place to place to place. I did a whole build video on the Josh and Jason Destroy Everything channel that will probably be out by the time this comes out. Uh, but basically it's got like batteries, it's got uh, a bunch of mounting hardware, anything I might need to, you know, make anything work in the video production realm. Uh, like arms and tripod spreaders and different mounting points. Uh, this is awesome, I, I love this thing, it's got uh, different lights and tripod areas and gaff tape and lenses and whatnot. It's, I'm very happy about this. Uh, I'm not gonna run through everything because this thing has got tons and tons of pieces on it and it's not static. There's lots of changing stuff. I take stuff out, I put stuff in just as I use it and that's kind of how this thing rolls. So uh, yeah, this thing is very cool. So uh, these are some giant acoustic panels that me and Jason built. Uh, They're both to serve the purpose of sound absorption, which they do a pretty decent job, uh, but they also double as both a light absorber and a light bounce, depending on the side. They have uh, white on one side and black on the other. And like most other things, they're on wheels. <laughs> So now we have firmly entered the recreation area. This is this third of the warehouse. Then there's kind of the video highway and then the, the sets on the right side. So one dominating personality trait of mine is that I pick up on things and then I like to get really, really good at them. Um, and I like to practice a lot and I find the process of developing new skills to be extremely cathartic. I like to up my skill tree basically. It's kind of how I view it in a weird way. So here in the recreation area, we have uh, things like a heavy bag. That's an Adidas 70 pound heavy bag. It's okay. It's kind of, you know, in the yellow section. Um, I have these floor mats for just kind of, uh, just body exercises like push-ups and sit-ups and stuff. Eventually I will get weights, but the prices of weights are outrageous. On the back end, we have a, <laughs> a knife, arrow, and ax throwing target area. Um, we have about 20 yards from there to there. It's about 60 feet. So you can get a 20 yard uh, a kind of you know archery range indoors, which is awesome. Uh, there's nobody back there um, and the walls are super tough. You can't shoot through them. Uh, so it's all good there. And then if we want to throw knives or something, we just get a little bit closer. So yeah, for this space, like I said, it's definitely unfinished. I think I want to add more workout space, but I do like having like a dedicated recreation area that's just for fun. I like that a lot. All right, that's it. That's the studio tour. Thank you very much for watching. Again, links to everything you saw here that I talked about will be in the description down below. I would appreciate a like, a subscription, and if you feel so inclined, a share would be awesome. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.